Hello everyone and welcome to the final episode of this tutorial series where we're rendering our capybara guy. Uh, if you haven't watched uh, the previous episodes you can find them in the description below. And over there I talk through my process from the sketch phase to base vectors, base colors and this one is about the final render. And in this video, I'll show you how to render this capybara's head. And then you can apply that same technique to render the rest of the body. Okay, so enjoy and have fun. Cheers! So here we have our artboards. We have uh, depicting all the steps that we took to get here. What we have here the, the sketch phase, base vectors, and base colors. Now I'm just going to duplicate this. So I'm just Ctrl C, Ctrl V here and drag it around here. Let's name this a render. Alright. So first thing that I'm gonna do is decide on where the main light is gonna hit this this character. So what I usually do I just draw a 3D arrow So this arrow is gonna help you see where uh, the light is hit this this guy if you think uh, of it as a three-dimensional shape you, you realize where the shadows are gonna be like this is gonna be shadow here this region here as well so just place this guy here to help you out with that. So what I usually do when rendering a character, I start with the head because it's usually the most interesting part. So I go through with it. When I'm done, then I I go to the body. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm thinking of the of the three-dimensional shape of this head here. So let me just draw some guides just so I can show you what I mean. So there's like a, a different plane here on this side. So we have two planes here. So this area is gonna be in shadow for instance. So that, that's how you're going to visualize things. You have to think in 3D in order to figure out where the shadows are going to be. So let's start by drawing the shadow in this area here. So the light's coming from this direction. So we're going to have a shadow here and it, go, it wraps up around uh, the lower part of the head goes under the chin so I'm just going to draw that and remember it's it's a round head right it's not a box so that's why uh, I drew this uh, circular this curved line here Remember, this guy's head is not a box, it's an organic rounded shape, so that's why I drew this curved path here. So this is the shape of the shadow we're gonna have, I, you can see that I just closed it using the, paint, the pen tool. So I'm gonna cut it, let me ungroup this guy. I'm gonna select the, the head shape and I'm gonna paste that path inside here. Now uh, I'm gonna hit Shift X so I can invert the stroke to fill, like so. And I'm gonna check the, the fill here and I'm gonna drag the eyedropper tool here to apply the same blue that we have for this skin base color. 
now I'm gonna just turn down the luminosity adjust a bit of the hue like that then I'm gonna go to the layers panel and click layer effects and we are going to add Gaussian blur to it just drag the slider a bit you can already tell that there's some volume just by doing this simple step, right? Okay, done. Uh, throughout this tutorial, you're not gonna see me going to the layers panel and and choosing the effect button. I I added a shortcut to it, so since I'm I'm not doing use. Uh, w on my keyboard for anything else, so I just hit it to open the, the layer effects. You can edit your shortcuts here. You go to Edit Preferences, Keyboard Shortcuts. Okay, so we have our shadow here. And we can take it one step further by having a stronger shadow here. I'm just gonna close it, pick any color just so I can see the shape. Then I'm going to select the head, double click it to select the, the shadow, copy it. Then I'm gonna select this shape and paste attributes. There. And then I'm gonna tone down the luminosity again. I'm going to cut this shape, select the head, paste it inside. Play around with the Gaussian blur again. And you can go to the node tool and adjust its, its shape. All right. You can also get rid of the lines. so it doesn't bother you while you're shading. Okay. There you go. Now as for this part here, this is a transparent object. We use the transparency tool, but you can also add a gradient on top of it. So I'm gonna choose the gradient tool. I'm gonna press G. The gradient tool should be in your toolbar. I just hit it because I, I don't I don't use it very much. I don't click it here very much. I just use the shortcut key. So I press G. Then I'm gonna click and drag here. Adjust the handles. I hold down Control to move it. And also adjust its color, like so. And I'm also gonna get rid of the lines. Okay, I'm also gonna get rid of these lines here.
and let's start rendering the nose so lights coming here you can always move the arrow to help you so uh, what I'm thinking here is that we have a plane let me pick a color here So here's what I'm thinking about the planes. So this, this region here is going to be in shadow. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm even going to use this path I drew. Okay, close it. Cut it. Select the nose. And all the same jazz. Paste it inside. I'm going to press Shift X to invert lines with fills. For the color, I'm going to choose the darkest blue we have here, press enter, and Gaussian blur. Let me remove, let me remove these strokes for these guys. And as you're shading, you can start seeing some weird stuff, like uh, either the shadow here is too dark, or the holes are too light. So what you can do, I can just uh, make the holes darker here. Let me remove the lines. should be okay. I'm gonna copy it. Base attributes. All right. Maybe this blur should be sharper. Okay, I'm going to adjust this curve here as well. So there's more shadow on the underside here. Close the shape, get rid of some nodes. Well, now the shape, sh the shadow shape here has to be adjusted. Okay. Now I, I want this to bend into this underside here a bit more, so I can just do a work around. Just draw this random shape. This and add some blur. Blend it a bit more. Now, as for this part here, it shouldn't be this light, right? So let's tone it down a bit. It should be darker here because this part is is not getting any light coming from here, right? So it should be darker here and lighter here. So I'm just pick, gonna pick the gradient tool G and drag it like so. I'm 
I'm gonna copy it and paste it on the other side here. I guess I copied the wrong object. Okay, yeah. copy it, paste it. They're a bit off center. adjusting them okay maybe I can go darker with the the first shadow that we did here just so we have more contrast bluish and you keep adjusting as you go rarely do I get it on the first try now I can see a mistake here like the head is rounded like so right so I could also have a shape here denoting that there's not as much light hitting it I could either adjust this path here or just draw another one whichever is easier and quicker so I'm just gonna draw this other one Pick the color here, copy it, paste it inside it, and adjust Gaussian blur. Is it too much? Maybe. You could keep adjusting the Gaussian blur. You can. Uh, adjust the lightness here or simply uh, change its opacity this shape opacity by hitting by hitting the the number number keys on your keyboard like 50 percent 70 percent zero for a hundred percent and it has been pasted on top of this darker shadow that we did so I'm gonna send it back there forward back I still think this it's too sharp here so we need more Gaussian blur same here and you just keep creating shapes and adding effects to it until you feel it looks nice you feel you you could you could actually grab it you don't you don't have to worry too, too much about layers. This one, I think it could be just a solid color. Could work. Uh, there's just a blending issue here. Let me see if you can fix it by using the grading tool. Until it's barely noticeable. It's pretty noticeable here, but I don't care very much because later on we're gonna have a, a fold shadow here and you won't be able to see this. So don't worry. What else? This region here should be in shadow. So I'm just gonna for this one I'm gonna I'm going to draw the an, an ellipse. So I have the ellipse tool here. I'm gonna cut it select this part paste it and 
Garage and Blur. Maybe darker. This part as well. This is going to be a little bit different. Let me adjust it a, a bit. Okay, because I want the the blur effect to go here and I don't want it to overflow to this side here. So there's this fancy workaround. I'm going to use the node tool, select this node, just so I can close this shape. Then I'm going to draw another shape, which is going to be our shadow. Okay, pick the color here, cut it, paste inside this object, adjust it a bit. Gaussian blur. Okay, let me close it. And then I'm going to select this outer object and simply, whoops, simply remove the stroke. Okay, so, but there's some weird stuff going on here. I could select the shape again and adjust the nodes like so, or I could simply group it. So I'm going to press Ctrl G and then I'm going to use the transparency tool. I'm going to press Y and just drag it around here. I don't like this as well. I could also just double click it until I select the shadow and choose uh, adjust the nodes so the shadow doesn't go all the way there. Or I could still use the transparency tool again. So I press Y. But if I use it here, we're gonna have this side removed. Yeah, we're gonna lose the transparency here on the side. So the workaround for that, first I select the object, I'm going to group it, then I'm going to use the transparency tool, there. Hold down control to drag the handles. Alright. It's not subtle enough, so I'm going to adjust the transparency, there. Also just the snack here. Okay. Now it's time for the fold in here. So I'm gonna drag this shape using the node tool to draw where the fold's gonna be. Just draw it again from scratch. I'm gonna click it and just close it. Just adding a stroke here just so I can see where the shape is. So what I'm gonna do here is the same as we did here the same procedure. I'm going to draw where the shadow is going to be. 
Shift X. I'm gonna cut it, paste it inside this object. I'm gonna choose the the darkest skin tone we have here. Enter. Add some blur to it. Remove the, the stroke. See? Since there's very little light hitting here, I could even make it a bit darker. So I'm gonna select it, double click it to select the shadow we drew inside it. And I'm gonna press G to select the gradient tool and I'm going to drag it. more of a subtle curve here. Okay, but there's this weird thing here. I could simply adjust the nodes here or I could co uh, cut this whole shape and paste it inside the neck. But this will do. Could have a darker shadow here as well. I'm going to do just that. Pick the darkest skin tone, press enter, cut it, select the head paste inside the head, add blur. As for this part here, this is going to be uh, clumps of fur facing downwards, so this shape is going to be a shadow. to close the year path here. So you have a rounded shape here. Also going to close this shape here. Figure out another color for it later. Pointy corner here. I don't like it. So I'm just going to press C to use the corner tool here and drag it here much better
the inside of the ear here, I'm think of it as a curved surface. And since the light is hitting here, this lower part should be lighter. So I'm going to pick it, choose the grading tool, and drag it. Uh, Affinity Designer automatically chooses the color for your gradient when you apply the gradient tool. So it applied the, uh, the color that I don't want to. So I'm just going to move it around like so. Choose a lighter color here. And darker for this one. And I'm going to adjust the angle. The light's coming from this direction, so I'm going to sort of mimic that angle. Looking good. Let's do the lip. So this area of the lip should be in shadow. This color, make it darker, cut it and paste it inside the lip. Okay, now we can get rid of this line here. Let me just close this shape here so we can have this fold on the lip. I don't want this curved line here, so in order to get rid of this curved line, I just click with the pen tool on the node again. And then I draw it. This should be the darkest blue we have here. Cut it, select the lip, paste it. So it goes behind the mouth. And I'm also going... Oh, I have to align it first here. Let me adjust the curve so it, it follows the, the shape of the mouth here. And the transparency tool. Cool. I don't like the way it turned out here. So I'm just going to group it so I can use the transparency tool again without losing the one we did previously. Here. Uh, the other side of the mouth here, it folds into the mouth, right? Like it has this shape like this. It folds in inside it. So this should have a little bit of shadow as well. So I'm going to just draw it here. Good, it's like the head, paste it, blur it a bit. Move it around a bit and zoom out. Zooming out uh, allows you to see it better. Can you see that we already have some volume to it, but we're gonna push it even further soon with another step when we add the, the light and the highlights. 
So the, the lip here is casting a shadow onto the tooth, which is somewhat like this, right? This is where the shadow is. So let me grab the tooth collar. Let me cut this, paste it inside the tooth. The tooth is, has, uh, was already pasted inside the mouth. So I have to access it first. So I double click it. Now I can paste it inside the tooth. Now I drag down the luminosity a bit. As I drag it down, I'm going to change the, the hue. So it looks less plasticky if you do so. Right. I'm going to move the nodes here so we can have more shadow. And I'm going to, using the node tool, I'm going to make it rounder. So as to suggest that the, the tooth has a volume here. Maybe it should be even darker. Less saturated. Be warmer. Yes. And this tooth is also casting a shadow onto this other tooth here. So I'm going to do that as well. Access the shadow here, copy it, select this shape, base attributes, cut it, select this other tooth, paste it inside. And let's add a bit of blur. Just a little bit. As with this one. can even add a, a gradient to the tooth itself. Since it's curved here, we can suggest that this, this part doesn't get as much light. Drag it here, I'm going to choose the darkest value we have here. Drag the handle around. Ah, much better, see? This is, looks flat. This looks like it has volume. I'm going to copy it, select this one, paste attributes. Sometimes when you copy and paste a gradient, the pasted object uh, has these extra angles here, extra, extra handles, I mean. Uh, so you can adjust, you can skew it put it here so you can see it better. I don't use it, usually use it, so I just get rid of it. Cool. Let's add a gradient to the inside of the mouth as well. I want this part to be lighter, not this one. Since I already had a very dark value for the inside of the mouth, when I apply the gradient tool, uh, Affinity Designer automatically added the other handle to a lighter color, because it couldn't go darker. So what you can do, you can just drag it around like, like this, or here in the toolbar, you just click this guy here, reverse gradient. Deal with the tongue now. I'm not sure if it should be red actually, because this is a blue guy. Maybe it should be purplish. Let's see if that looks good. Purple tongue. Okay, uh, so now the this part of the mouth is casting a shadow onto the tongue. 
So the tongue is rounded. It follows this shape here, right? So that's the shape we're gonna have our shadow here. And the tongue is further away from the lip uh, as opposed to the teeth. So the shadow is longer and more diffuse. So closing the shape, grabbing the purple color, turning it down a bit. paste it inside the tongue here and blur it then I'm going to select the tongue and add a gradient the same color as I did the shadow here this part of the tongue is facing away from the light And that's the secret, you keep adjusting until it feels right. I'm going to add a gradient to this shadow here. So gradient tool. So it's darker here where we keep, there is absolutely no light. You can even go darker with the mouth as well. Looking at it, I feel like the teeth do not belong here with the color they have now. So I could, I can adjust it, but instead of choosing every object and adjusting the colors, I could just apply a, a what do you call it? An adjustment, yeah, a layer adjustment to it. So I'm going to select both, I'm going to group them. Then I'll click here on the layers panel, choose HSL, and start playing around with it. Let me zoom out a bit so I can see it better. You can see the whole picture. Be bluish maybe? Less saturated and lighter. Yeah, it looks better now. But since I applied the, this adjustment and we made it lighter, we kind of lost the shadows. So we can go back to the object and Adjust those shadows to counterbalance what we uh, just did. adjustment. This time brightness and contrast. Let me increase the contrast and the brightness. You can play around with it. And you can see the before and after by checking the layer adjustment visibility. So what can we do to make this guy pop even more? We can do a light pass on it. We just did the shadow pass. We just worried about shadows. And now we're going to add the lights. So this is what we're going to do. Let's drag the arrow here. Let's draw, let's start doing that with the larger shapes first. 
So this area here and this here should be in light. So I'm going to draw a shape like that. It could be a little sloppy here, it doesn't have to, to be very precise. Okay, I'm going to fill this with white. Go to layers and set the blend mode to overlay. Overlay works most of the time for this step. Cutting it and paste it on top of the head here so it goes behind the nose. I always trust the blur. Here. And the transparency too, so we can fade this part here. Duplicate it, it's still light. So you can do that, or you can, if overlay doesn't work, you set it to normal, and instead of having it white, you actually choose a color, a lighter color of the base one. So lighter here, let's get it more saturated, and change its hue a bit goes more to the green yeah, if it's green it's more interesting yeah I think I've got rid of the overlay effect so more of a greenish blue here same with this part color so I can see it. Copy, select this, paste attributes. You might have to increase the blur here. Okay, it's going over where I don't want it to be. So I'll cut it, select this, paste it inside. Just a transparency here, and now we can get rid of this stroke here. Okay, now we have an opportunity to add a highlight here. So, uh you see how it's curved like this. So the outermost part here, we can use it to to have a highlight. And set it to white. Check overlay here. Bit of blur. Adjust the shape a bit. Fade it out.
let's add some volume to this clumps of fur here copying this object and paste it here adjust the transparency much turn it down a bit I just adjust the, the transparency same here you know what I could group these guys let me group them both the shadow and the highlight and this one And you, we can start duplicating them and placing them somewhere else. Grading tool, but this time I'm going to change it from linear to elliptical. I can change this so it's sharper and I can uh, turn this off if it's on and I drag it it changes both handles see but if it's off I can move them independently so I have better control and I can hold con down control to move it here Okay. So one more thing you can do to make it feel 3D is adding a bit of uh, rim light around some key parts, like for instance here. The outermost part of the head, we're just going to have a, a white shape here inside the head, blur, move it around here so it's just a little bit subtle. See how it pops? So you just find those key areas to, to add those rim light, the, the rim light, and uh, it will make your uh, character pop even more. So I would add it here, this part here, this part of the nose as well. And also here on the other side, you, you look for the darker, mostly darker areas and, and you add it like here and here. I already did it. The thing is, I don't know why I didn't record it, but there, there you have it. Let me also get rid of this one. So you can see the difference. So here's without the, the rim light and here's with, with the rim light. Okay. So let me get rid of this artboard here. 
and it's the same procedure I just added a shape with blur here on the head as well all right it's good the way it is but we can go even further so here we have our uh, our main light source but there's a little bit of light coming the other way so for the nose here for instance I can add a bit of light here in this region look at that I can also uh, go as far as making the light that's shining onto the top of the head here reflect under the, the head. So it's going to reflect a bluish light here. something very subtle just so there's a hint of it here and let me add a little bit of texture to the nose here I'm not gonna grab uh, bitmaps and apply effects with I'm go just going to draw some ellipses here they're gonna be white then I st start uh, adding variation to them like this I tr just drag them around resize them overlap them a bit transparency as well I'll group them drag and mount to the nose overlay resize it a bit more and start duplicating it and resizing rotating just place them at random locations so that's the process I use when rendering my characters uh, now I'm going to speed up the rest of the process here because I'm going to use every technique technique that we use for the head I'm going to apply it to the rest of the character itself so let's do this
Alright everyone, so this is it for the tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't watched the previous episodes, make sure to do so and visit the links in the description below. Okay, so I'll see you next time. Cheers, take care.